Hi guys, thank you so much for joining this whole body rider pilates session. I've kept it super simple this time. You need absolutely no equipment. You need hardly any space. You'll see I haven't got a mat. I'm on a nice grippy surface with this grass. So if you don't need a mat or you haven't got a mat, then just make sure that you're on a surface that you can grip on. But you otherwise need absolutely no equipment and minimal space. So there's no excuse not to be incorporating these exercises into your daily routine. So let's just check, make sure everything is in a good spot before you get started. So thinking of your posture, that nice elastic spine drawing you up tall, relaxing through your shoulders and arms. Make sure that you're breathing right into the base of your lungs. Don't want to neglect the top of your lungs, but this is the big section, this is where you get most of the air. So remember you want to be practicing that ability to breathe and expand, fill your lungs with air down to the bottom now that it's more natural when you're on the horse, particularly if you get a little bit tense at times. Be aware of those imaginary ropes or springs that are connecting your ribs down to your pelvis so that if they're sagging, this tends to happen. I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. You want that feeling of you're just gently bringing your ribs down, keeping that connection between upper body and lower body. Make sure your headlights are pointing straight ahead and you can tilt them up and down keeping the rest of your body nice and still. Okay, then relax with your headlights pointing straight ahead. Make sure your pelvic floor lift is up onto floor three. Ground floor is zero. Floor 10 is somewhere up here. So you want to be lifting onto floor three. Making sure your knees are soft and you've got equal weight through your feet. And then we're going to start by turning your head from side to side. Make sure that your neck movement is as good as it can be before you start. Try to keep your eyes level so you're not dipping down as you turn. So eyes are staying level. And also check that you're not cheating. If you're stiffer one way, you're not cheating and twisting through your shoulders. You wanted a nice, pure neck movement. Remember, if you turn your head and your body starts to come to, your horse is going to feel that shift in body weight way more than if you just turn your head so just be aware of that obviously sometimes you want to be, your horse to feel that you move through your body but sometimes you just want to be able to turn your head and not affect what's happening underneath you so make sure you can do that off the horse okay keep your knees really soft we're going to do some upper body rolls taking your arms forwards over to one side and up forwards over to the other side and up. This is called the upper body roll because you want to feel like your body is just rolling through that movement nice and soft and flowing. Knees are soft, arms are soft, everything is nice and loose. Okay, keeping your knees soft, bring your arms up above your head, reach up with one arm for a big breath in, feel that lengthening down your side and breathe out. And then again, reach up the other side, big breath in, and out. Keep those knees lovely and soft. I hope my hands are staying in shot. We'll do one more with each arm. Last one. Okay, then bring your arms back down, pop your hands onto your headlights, and we're going to do your hip openers. So bringing one leg up, out, and down, and bring the other leg up, out, and down. Body is as still as you can make it, really focusing this on getting your hips moving if your body starts to move then you're cheating a little bit now if you do have any hip stiffness and i do see quite a few people these days who come to me and they've got one hip that's really good and the other one definitely not quite so good but they're still really keen to keep on the move just modify the movement for the stiff side do what you can you don't have to force it to be as good as the other side sounds obvious but a lot of people worry that they should be forcing the stiffer side to be as good as the other side nope do what you can do okay so we're going to take the legs the other way so out and in out and in. So if you've got a joint, just expanding on that thought, if you've got a joint that is a little bit stiff when you first get moving but it gradually moves more as you do more, that's slightly different. You want to be gradually trying to work that a little bit further. But if you've got an arthritic joint, particularly say with a hip, you don't want to be forcing it. You just want to be getting that circulation going, that lubrication going within the joint so it's ready to exercise as best as it possibly can. Okay, let's go with some walking. So opposite arms and legs and now really start to think about those ribs sinking down let me go sideways so if you let them go forwards this is what happens 
and then you find that your head starts to nod and that's when you're doing your sitting trot and you just look like you've got the wobbly head syndrome so the more you can think about ribs sinking down the better the better connected upper and lower bodies will be okay let's do this in the wide position feet out wide and now you're doing opposite arms and legs watching you don't turn into a bit of a windmill so the body is still it's the arms and legs that are on the move okay super job let's bring your arms back down by your side okay we're going to go into some squats we're going to start off just doing straightforward squats thinking of having your shoulders over your headlights as you go. So think about if you were doing rising trot, you'd really want to have your shoulders staying over your pelvis and not tipping forwards, that tips your weight onto your forehand. But let's take these onto your toes, do a few like this just to warm up. Bring your arms up in front and see if you can do a few where you just reach forward. So you might just do them, if I go from the side, you might just go if you were doing a little bit of a give and retake of the reins, or you might be going forwards as if you're going over a fence. So it's up to you. You can just do some little ones. I think my first one's a little bit too big for a given we take of the reins, but this is the difference you want to be practicing for going over the fence. Okay, two more. Lovely job. Okay, bring your hands back down again. Okay, we're going to move on to your star lunges. So you do want, if you can, to have your hands up in front, we want to be thinking about what's happening with your contact, even when your lower body is quite busy and on the go. So have your hands up if you can. If you find that just throws you off too much, pop them onto your headlights instead. But hands up in front, try to keep your headlights pointing straight ahead as you go forwards, diagonal, side, diagonal back, and back onto a bent knee. We're going into the reverse on that leg. So back onto the bent knee, diagonal, side, diagonal forwards and forwards. Let's go off with the other leg. Check that your hands are soft, light and level. Check that your headlights are staying pointing forwards as you go into the reverse on that leg. Make sure you go back onto a bent knee. Good. Diagonal, side, checking with the hands and forwards. Okay, we're going to go onto the first leg. Again, forwards, diagonal, side, diagonal, back onto the bent knee, onto the other leg now, back, diagonal, side, diagonal, forwards and into the reverse, so back onto that leg once again, check in with your hands, soft, light and still, back onto the bent knee and onto the other leg for one more go, back, diagonal, make sure those headlights are pointing straight ahead as you go and they're not following you through with the leg. Okie doke. We're going to move on to the aeroplane. If you're doing this indoors, which you most likely are, and you've got a wall nearby, you can if you need to, put your bent leg foot up against the wall. I don't have the option, so I will do the best I can. I have my foot in a hole in the ground and hopefully it will stay there. Okay, so arms out to the side. You want to be moving through the middle of your body. You're not swinging through your arms. Keep the knees soft as you turn and try and touch the floor with one hand, come up, turn, and try and touch the floor with the other hand. And I appreciate you may not be able to do that. So if you just want to be gently turning in midair, go for it, that's absolutely fine. But if you can get to the floor, great. You are trying as much as you can to keep that top arm right up behind you. Easier said than done because you can't see it and I'm fairly certain that I have plenty of goes when I don't get it quite right, but that's what you're aiming for. Turning through your body to get the hand to the floor, not moving from the shoulder. Okay, then let's swap over onto the other leg. So get yourself balanced. Again, if you need to use the wall for your foot, go for it. And again, turning through your body to get your hand to the floor. Again, if you find that you can't manage that, then just turning in midair, but really going for turning through your body, not from your arms. You may well find that one side is way easier to do than the other. Don't panic. 
that's a combination of balance and strength while the two go hand in hand. So it just shows that you need a little bit more work with that. Let's do one more. Okay, then bring your arms back down by your side. Okay, hands onto your headlights, one foot up onto your knee, and we're going to do your clam. So again, you're keeping your headlights forwards and you're turning out from your hip. So you're stable on the leg you're standing on, moving from the leg that you're moving. If you find that a bit easy, you can add in the extensions, but still keep your headlights forwards. And if you're finding that a bit easy, then again, think about taking your hands away completely and just working on, can you keep your hands lovely and soft, shoulders level, so that nothing with your contact is being interfered with, even though your leg is on the go underneath you. Let's do one more this way. Okay. Start off with the other leg, same again, hands onto your headlights so that really as you do those first few, you can check in that your headlights are staying to the front. Remember, if your headlights twist, then you're creating that movement by turning through your body, you're not isolating it from the hip. Okay, and then again, if you're finding that easy, add in extensions and bring the hands up into your imaginary contact position. Do two more with this leg. Last one. Lovely. Okay, bring your feet down. And let everything just relax by your side. Okay, then onto one leg. Soften through your shoulders. Make sure you're happy. And then if you can, try to close your eyes. And focus on what you feel through your foot. Allow your body to move as it needs to, to absorb those little changes in direction that come up through your ankle, through your knee, through your hip. But keep soft and relaxed through your upper body as much as you can. Okay, then we're going to swap onto the other leg and do exactly the same thing. So get your balance with your eyes open first and then close your eyes. And again, listen to what your foot is telling you. Don't fear those movements. When you become fearful of those movements, that's when the rigidity starts to set in. So just be soft and feel those movements coming up, ankle, knee, through the hip, and keep your upper body soft. Okay, open your eyes, put your feet onto the floor, and then we're going to go into a little gentle calf stretch position. So back heel down, back knee straight. Remember when we're stretching, we're not making tissues longer, we're taking them through their full available length. Bring your hands together and as you lean forwards with your pelvis, bring your hands up above your head, try not to fall over. And then as you bring your hands down, you come back up. And again, go forwards, reach up, stretch and lengthen and move through your upper back. And come back. And we're going to do one more just like that. So forwards and up. Okay, then we're going to swap and do the same thing with the other foot in front. Back heel down, back knee straight. And again, as you go forwards with your pelvis, bring your hands up. Mobilise your shoulders, mobilise your upper back. And then come back down and up with your pelvis. And again, forwards with your pelvis, up with your arms to loosen your shoulders and upper back. And come back to your starting point. We'll do one more this way. Forwards and up. And then come back down. Okay, bring your feet back underneath you. Make sure you've got equal weight through your feet. Your spine is feeling elastic and your arms and hands are feeling soft. And we're going to finish there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that enjoyable and useful and gave you a few more ideas for things you can be working on. Remember that even if you're not doing lots and lots of weight bearing exercises with your arms all the time that you're doing con control work with your upper body when you're working your lower body, you are working your body as a whole. So it's all good stuff to be doing, even if it's just something you can practice a couple of minutes here and there at random points during the day. Thank you for watching. Um, look after yourselves and I'll see you very soon.